Thanks for taking the time to check out this next in my Take Control of Your Headshots web series. Today we're going to look at posing for headshots. Now this is a really important area of getting a great headshot, but it's something that actors get very anxious about. And I know coming from an acting background myself that it was something that worried me before a shoot and even during it, and I see it with my clients today. Most actors, even those with decades of experience, find the moment when that gets jammed in your face slightly disconcerting. So. Here are my nine tips for posing like a pro. One, you're not doing it wrong. Now, this is really important to emphasize. There is not one way to pose for a great headshot. Now, you might have seen online techniques like Peter Hurley's jawline or squinch technique, and they're examples of very specific ways of posing during a headshot session that can work beautifully with a specific photographer or can work really well with a certain sort of client. But what you'll find is that every photographer has a different vocabulary and a different way of directing their clients. Personally, I'm very detailed and precise. I like to have people make very tiny adjustments and I might use phrases like warm it up, cool it down. Other photographers might chat to you and appear to not be doing much more than having a conversation whilst they're taking photos. That doesn't mean they won't be equally good photos to mine or any other photographers. It's just a different way of working with you. So what I'd say is be really open to the way that your photographer works with you on the day of the shoot. Two, know your face. Now it might seem obvious, but knowing your face inside out and back to front, how you can control it and how you can subtly communicate is really important for a successful headshot session. It's a reality of modern acting that you'll be self-taping all the time. And if you self-tape a lot, then you learn pretty quickly what's too much, what's too little, what's over the top, and what doesn't read at all on camera. And the same is really true for stills. Practice equals relaxation, it equals ease, it equals confidence control and ultimately better headshots. So take every opportunity you can to practice in front of a stills camera. Most people have got a camera phone in their pocket, you might have a friend with, a, with an entry level DSLR or even some recording equipment. Or if all else fails, a mirror is a great tool for just really getting to know how your face works and how you can subtly control it. Three, making an offer. If you're inert and passive in your headshot session, then you shouldn't be surprised if the shots that come out are slightly bored and detached. It's really important to bring some energy and connection to the shoot so you're ready to perform. It is a very small performance for camera on the day of a shoot. Now, whether that performance is about intensity or optimism or lightness or vulnerability, be ready to give something of yourself to the camera for the camera and for your photographer to respond to. Staying loose. Now, during your headshot session, you're probably going to be holding some slightly unnatural or uncomfortable feeling postures for quite a bit of time. And it's um, really easy to slip into cumulatively um, a facial expression or a posture that you don't break out of. And you end up looking at your shots and thinking, oh, that whole batch just looks the same effectively. So it's really important whenever the photographer is changing lights or just checking out something on the back of the camera, take that opportunity to breathe relax, roll your shoulders, screw your eyes up, stretch them out, blow the lips out, roll your jaw, do anything that you need to do to just physically reset so that when the photographer picks up their camera again or they're ready to shoot, you're coming back to the camera with energy and with refreshed connection. Five, posture. Nothing, and I mean almost nothing, ruins a good headshot um, like bad posture. A rounded spine can make you feel really unconfident and detached. And even if, and this will often happen in a portrait shoot, the photographer's having you lean or push forward towards the camera, rounded shoulders very rarely look good. Pop the spine there, draw the shoulders back a little bit. Six, trusting your photographer. Now, when we're shooting headshots, what's in the frame is your head and shoulders. And oftentimes, what's going on with the rest of your body can feel a bit unnatural or a bit forced. That's because most photographers have evolved their own way of getting clients to pose physically. That will often involve a lean or a push forward into camera, and it might be that the legs and hands and arms um, are doing quite different things out of shot that don't feel like they'd make a great photo. But when you see the finished shot, you'll realise it's all been about what's going on up there. 
So the really important thing in the shoot is to trust your photographer. Don't second guess, don't try and be the outside eye. The most important thing to do is to have a thought, have an emotion, breathe with the posture or the pose that you're being asked to, um, to pull and find something genuine with it. Seven, look into the lens. Now probably the most common question I'm asked at the start of a headshot session is where should I look? And the answer is a really simple one for most contemporary headshot photographers. Really, really simple. Um, just right down the barrel of the lens and into the back of the camera, into the body of the camera. Now, when we're shooting, um, we're focusing often on or around your eyes. And if you're giving your gaze an intention right into the body of the camera, then we get shots where your eyes look out into the eyes of the viewer. You might see it technically as a white circle of light, um, either before or during the shot. You might see a little click of red as the flicker of red as the, as the autofocus goes. It doesn't really matter if you don't see either of those things. The important thing is to really connect with the camera and to be sending your thoughts into it. Now why is that? Well, as humans we're very sensitive to eye contact and we're very aware if we're speaking to people whether they're sort of slightly looking around and away from us to try and see what else is going on or if they're a bit bored and detached and looking into the middle distance. Um, but when we make genuine direct eye contact as humans we respond to that and I think that's true as a principle in a headshot. good striking headshot where the eyes are connected and pop out of the shot into the eyes of the employer or the producer or the casting director, then that's a good thing. Eight, communicate with your eyes. Now this is related to looking into the lens, but it is about the range of expression and emotion that you bring to the shoot. People often feel like they're not really changing their expression from shot to shot if they're doing a good job in a headshot session. And that's because a stills camera sees like a movie camera sees, I believe. It registers subtlety, it registers very small changes in thought and feeling. So the important thing is to feel, not to demonstrate. And to let the tiny changes in your facial expression or in your address to camera follow from those changes of thought, rather than try to display what you're feeling by a change in your facial expression. The other thing to bear in mind is that sometimes your expression can stay exactly the same, but because of a change in angle that the photographer is shooting from, or a change in the kind of lighting they're using, the same expression will read almost entirely differently in two consecutive shots. 9. Use your review time. These days, most headshot sessions involve some process of reviewing the shots that you've taken during the process of the shoot, whether that's on the back of the camera or on a screen in the photographer's studio. Now, I totally understand it can be a bit horrible looking at yourself 40 to 50 times over, but 40 to 50 photos of you is an awful lot of feedback about how your performance is reading on camera. And as an actor, you're almost certainly very good at responding to feedback, whether it's in rehearsals or on set. Take every opportunity you can get to look at the shots, to think, how is my expression reading? What's going on with my posture? What's the photographer making me do that's coming across really well on camera? And try and use that knowledge, every, every scrap of evidence you can get, to really arm you for the rest of the shoot. <laughs> Those are my nine tips for posing like a pro in your next headshot session. Hopefully they've given you some food for thought and they'll help you relax in camera and really communicate um, your thought and your feeling in your next shoot. If you found this instalment helpful, do check out other episodes in my Take Control of Your Headshots web series or subscribe at the link for future episodes to come.